Artist Journal, August 19th, 2022, Berlin. My name is Adrian Pocabelli, your artist reporter. I am back after yesterday's Spotify. And, uh, yeah, we've got kind of like rubber band, tape, scissors to put this video together. I am not a video expert, uh, but I am learning fast as I hold our theme music up to our microphone and it pleasantly fades out. So I thought, now that we have video and we're talking about art, we can look at recent acquisitions. I Again, I am creating a habit here with this artist journal. It's something that I've been saying for a little background for months to myself, that I basically need to do an artist journal and I basically just need to hit record and so that's what I'm basically doing, but you need to have a little bit of a structure. Otherwise, you probably just probably, probably won't reflect wonderfully on you if you don't. So I thought today we could start with recent acquisitions. And we're just looking at Kappa's work here, uh, but we're going to get to that in a second. Recent acquisitions, I want to go over a little bit of what we talked about yesterday on the audio. We had a nice little comment from... Uh, let me just see his name here. We had a nice little comment from Chi Mosku Jackson. Cool episode. Definitely make it video would be awesome to see reference artist work. And I totally agree with you. So we were mentioning that yesterday. I was mentioning that yesterday. And so that's what we're going to do. So I want to go over some recent acquisitions. I want to go over some of the art from yesterday that we discussed. Lewis Osborne's work, who kind of blew up. It's kind of cooled off a little bit in the last 24 hours or so. But... I sort of see this Lewis, actually, you know what, let's start with him. And then we'll go to the recent acquisitions, which may be how we will start it after this. But let's just pick up where we were yesterday. Quick recap. Uh, this guy's kind of blown up, this Lewis Osborne, Bristol-based illustrator. Very interesting moves. And so here's the guy I was talking about, okay? Uh, illustrator, graphic design guy. One of the first artists you really notice on Tezos when you come, at least when I came. Uh, but I'm kind of big on anecdotal data. And uh, I think I start off with Haiti Roquette, as I was saying in the last episode, whose work I highly recommend as well. Doing a lot of the glitched Nintendo ROMs. And, you know, which has been going on in the galleries for a long time, but he's made it his own and he does a really nice job of it. Uh, but, you know, we can all be Nintendo glitch ROM artists if we want. There's nothing. Uh, the person who innovated that, who knows where they are? That was, I, was that Corey Archangel or whatever? Or was that someone even way before? Because um, just to, you know, say... And I'm totally getting off topic here, but that, I mean, that's been going on where you saw the Super Mario Brothers was just the clouds going across and that was the the corrupted ROM. So it's been going around for a while. I saw that in the Whitney in New York, 2012, 2011. That was like the, that's actually kind of a semi-famous show now. I'm not even a huge fan of his work. I think it's kind of overrated. And there are so many underrated artists that we have to get to here. So let's get to that. So just a quick recap. This guy, who is one of the first guys you discover, I think, uh, when you get on the, uh, let's see if we can find his creations, created on the object platform, OBJKT, which is on Tezos, um, very recognizable style. Like, I mean, look at this. Like, I mean, there's an offer for, this just came out for 100 Tezos on this pretty cool balloon. This stuff used to go for like five or 10, if that. Uh, but he blew up. Look, price 200, price 1690 for a 10 edition here with this blue eye. Uh, you know, like basically, you see the prices here 40, 190, 46, 200 offers all across. Uh, you know, this Moving City series, I just picked up these two for like two Tezos like a week ago or so. And now they're selling for 255. I mean, you look at the history even. So I just want to point this out because I think what's happening to Lewis Osborne is going to happen to the whole ecosystem. And it's starting to happen to these art other artists too. Like we're 
mentioning yesterday, like Adelia, and we can maybe take a quick look at her. So quick recap episode here. So anyways, so you see, if you want to buy this now, it's 55. I mean, you go through the history, like what did, like, and there's been a lot of trading on this. This was minted on July 27th. So I guess this is almost a month old now, like three weeks old. I think I picked this up. Yeah, four, four Tezos, right? So now it's going for 55. And if you look at some of these recent sales here, accept offer for 40. Uh, you can't be too, you know, sale. Here's some sales. Okay, so sale 50 on August 14th. I think there's a little bit of FOMO buying here, but all to say, uh, the last two sales have been 50 and 40 on this work that came out three weeks ago. And this is typical for this guy. And it's really interesting. His one of ones, uh, they got, had like 1,500 euros, which, uh, sorry, 1,500 tezos. Let, let's just bring that up quickly. So, yeah, and so quick aside, I mean, this is these are the things that are exciting me right now in art. So I'm not married to this tezo situation here, but this is my artist journal. And this is what's kind of got me preoccupied since February, because I see basically a major, I see the digital art revolution. I think some really great things happen on Ethereum, but for myself, just from my own perspective, and most of my work is on Ethereum, and I'm very grateful to Ethereum, and frankly, the super rare platform, A, for letting me come on, and B, I got some great sales at the peak an ETH and a half when it was at 4,000 bucks for an ETH. So that was fabulous. I mean, that's the most success, frankly, I've had. I mean, I'd sold a painting for $1,500 uh, dollars before, um, but so this eclipsed that by far. Uh, those are from the Screen Memories series, which again, we can get into. Um, but yeah, you see this, was it this work? There's an offer for 1,500 euros, sorry, Tezos. I'm in Berlin here, as you know. Yeah, canceled offer, so no takers on that one. That person got it in an auction for 51 on the 29th of April, but you see the 16th of August, basically around the 14th of August, Lewis Osborne blew up. And so, yeah, so you can see the style, the, the style, right? It's, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it's an interesting debate in a sense. Like, it's very good for your success as an artist is if you're always kind of sticking to one style. I'm terrible at sticking to one style. I love, I have about eight different series that I work on simultaneously, um, but I'm okay with that. Like, and if, like, so all to say, uh, you can see he sticks to one style here. He has one basic series, and then he'll do variations on that specific kind of graphic designy style with the happy faces, which he does extremely well. I mean, I was lucky. I bought a lot of this work. Uh, I should have bought more. Um, but luckily, I was already collecting the work because I could see it was just kind of a... I've been kind of putting together a museum in my mind. Some people got a really nice message, I think, from Rorich yesterday saying, complimenting me on the collection that I have. And it's like, in my mind, I've been basically putting together a museum of sorts, like a digital art museum. Uh, and like in my world, like I'm so excited by what's going on here. And you see this brilliant work here with the camera and this love, it's a great social media. Oh, this one sold a lot. I should have bought that. I did get this one. This is a brilliant one. Let's just zoom in on that. Um, and I'm more excited about my little art collection here than I am about the Neue National Galerie, which is like, you know, the main uh, modern art museum, at least in Berlin. And I think it's the national one. And that's almost, you know, it's almost, you might think that's a ridiculous statement, but I mean, I've had friends who are like, Adrian, you need to like, you know, tone it down. Like nobody thinks you have a better collection, but in my heart of hearts, I enjoy it far more. And maybe that's a reflection on the Neue National Galerie's collection, which I find is actually surprisingly poor. It's I think it actually got looted after World War II ended or in Germany here. So I'm think I think that's actually what happened. It's just in, in 
you know, not to be super critical, and I'm happy, everybody that supports art, I'm happy about, even those people I'm critical about. Uh, but it's not the greatest collection in the world, from my perspective. Uh, I also, you know, yeah, so let's not go too far into that. But uh, that's basically what I'm building. They have 1,800 works, and I was thinking, okay, I got, I got close to 1,200 now. And so... So anyway, so there is Lewis Osborne, the guy we were talking about yesterday. I'll quickly go to, maybe we can find Adelia, who's also doing really well. Again, these are the artists that you find really early on, and these are the artists I'm starting to see a lot of offers for on my feed, which says to me that there is a wave of collectors coming, and they're in that process of discovery where I was, say, maybe in February, uh, when I started actually kind of buying seriously. Look at this beautiful work uh, she's got a new one space work and it's like three minutes what's going on here i don't even know what's going on here i don't know if you can hear it so this is something to check out edition of 15 buy for 35 how much was she selling this for 11. so unfortunately you know yeah i'm not sure exactly what's going on here and people have been mentioning the uh the flippers are getting like are inflating prices a lot and it's kind of a double-edged sword because on one hand they're kind of market makers like if you're an artist that does get these flippers on you're selling out right away it's kind of fantastic i would argue for the artist and then you have a market and people are buying and selling and you see what it's actually worth on the market so there is a benefit to the flippers at the same time they are just simply coming in as middlemen potentially with bot bots even I mean, we have to consider that as a possibility that they're even going with bots at certain artists as soon as they're minted, start buying up all the works and then selling them to everybody who actually is interested in collecting the works at a higher price so that they can collect their two or three Tez, sometimes more. So, yeah, so that's kind of going on. I'm not sure if I'm getting all my notifications here. You see my notifications, it's like you received an offer for 24 Tezos for this Lewis Osborne. This has been the story for the last, you know, few, even an offer on this crazy piece. Wow. Uh, I, I just bought this because I like screenshots and can't tell if it's a new, it looks like an old artist around from around these parts, but with a new name, Minta. Going for four, Tezos got an offer on it. So interesting. I like the screenshots. You know, back in 2011, 2012, I was doing a ton of screenshot work. I don't even know if I have pictures of that. That's in Toronto, Canada right now. Hopefully, hopefully my brother hasn't thrown it out. So anyway, I don't want to go on and on here. I actually want to keep these short because I have art to do. And I have actually regular work stuff to do too, to pay my way through this world until the art thing takes off, hopefully. Um, so anyways, so just... A quick recap there. Uh, quick, I just want to take a look at a couple of works here in recent acquisitions. This is a super interesting work here. This is by, I think his name is Kappa. Let me just look. Here he is. Yeah, I was just looking at his feed. International Gangster, edition of 10, Fortezos. You can still get this, okay? Fortezos. And look, it's like a full, like, what I've become excited about after four months in the ecosystem is what I call, I think we all might call narrative painting. Basically still static works. They can be dynamic potentially, but this is a static work. It's kind of like the creme, the elite of painting. I was going to say the creme de creme, but I don't want to mess, confuse people because there's a group called that on Tezos. But, but narrative static work is kind of like the elite of the elite. And, you know, this guy's making pretty interesting work and where you see where he's coming from, let me just first show you where he's come from. So he's the guy that does these works, if you recognize it. Again, would, would we have any info on him? Argentina. And there's a lot of these kind of South American artists on this platform, which makes it kind of interesting. Um, let's go back. Okay, so, He's put out a couple of really nice paintings, digital paintings. F the Boss, like really nice work. Uh, he's come a long way 
because he did all these, which were pretty cool. But before that, I mean, it was kind of like this almost cartoony, jokey, like pretty good. Like I still want to collect this, but like kind of this cartoony, jokey, semi-amateur looking, frankly. And I mean, credit to him. That's how far he's come. And this is just kind of like one of the many, many, many exciting artists. And I bring him up because it's just like maybe recent acquisitions as a way to just talk about some of these people. Because again, look at look at how interesting this work is. So this is called International Gangster. And you just look at, see, the, this work goes all the way to the top of the screen here. The blue gradient. So just the composition in itself is kind of interesting. The messaging, the world is yours, and then it has a bunch of Western flags. That I mean, maybe this is Argentinian. It looks like Italian, U.S., Canadian, French. So I don't know if it's an accident that he's kind of putting, like, everybody who's in the same block. Like, there's no Chinese or Russian flags or Iranian flags here. Um, there's no Indian flag here. Uh, so, and this, the world is yours, so... I actually, I don't know if it's an accident or not. We have to assume it's not. Uh, but it seems to me like this is kind of a, it's quite ambiguous. The world is yours. Like, is this a critique of the West? Or is this literally just saying, hurrah, and put Argentina in the middle. He's from Argentina. But then there's the guy giving the finger. So what's brilliant about it? Whatever the case, whatever he intended is, this is ambiguous, and it's like you know that's it's it's almost like it re reminds me of like a Warholian dollar sign, you know, if you know those works, which are ambiguous. Is he celebrating? Is he critiquing capitalism? Is he celebrating money? And it was both. I don't know if there's anything that far here. I mean, we saw the work from just a couple of months ago. It was almost like little cartoons. Is he all of a sudden making like super sophisticated, ambiguous narrative painting? Is it a fluke? I don't know. Uh, but either way, it's a pretty cool work. Still available. Only an edition of 10 for four Tezos. So super interesting. Let's look at one more. Again, I don't, I'm, I'm already going way over time here. I'd like to do these for uh, 10 minutes, really. But let's just see. We're experimenting here. We're creating the habit. Um, and then there's this guy, Audie, who's total. It's a bit of a weirdo, but a lovable weirdo, I think. Uh, like, I mean, pretty creepy here. Like, whatever is going on here. MSN Smash, but addition of five. I mean, if I had come to this as the first work I saw by him, I might think it's a little weird and off. But Audie's got a great selection of work, and you know, you've, where to begin? I mean, uh, you know, just kind of awesome from the outset. You know, Fly to the Moon. You got a. I think this is the first Audie I bought. Just really beautiful work. Another again, look that you can still buy that. I think he's going to burn them actually really soon. But you can still buy that work I was showing you. Edition of five for five tezos. Uh, you know, am I the last person? Yeah, I was the last person to buy one of these for 12 Tezos, and I thought I was getting a steal. Edition of 13, what I consider a major artist on the Tezos platform. And again, Tezos is going in the last couple of months between a buck 50, actually as low as a buck 20 and two dollars. And this brings up another little thing. Like I buy a ton of work and people retweet. Unfortunately, they retweet my me collecting them more than my actual art, but I'll take it. Um, but the, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, I'm not a whale. <laughs> I just want everybody to know that. Because sometimes I just like, see like, oh, Pokebelly's bought another work. Pokebelly spent seven. I, I'm just like some dude. I did okay in crypto, but I'm like, you know, oh, tax time is coming. Like, I'll be like, oh, shit. What I have to, you know. Uh, put everything together and save my money for next year's taxes and everything. Okay, so I'm I'm just really passionate about what I see here, and I just see a ton of value because 
I guess this is my point of what I'm saying, saying, what I'm saying here with this whole I'm not a whale thing. Look, you can buy this work here for five Tezos. It's an addition of five, and he actually just put a tweet out that he's going to burn the three that haven't sold. So that could be an addition of two that you're getting basically for the equivalent of $8 US. Where, and like, again, ambiguous narrative painting, and I don't even know if I like what's going on in this painting. It's a little weird, but ambiguous, subtle. You can tell these are people that have gone to museums, that have studied some art history. Interesting little, you know, the, the look at the different postures here. This outrageous one here and all of them though. So all to say, there's a lot to like here uh, with what's going on on Tezos. And finally, as we wrap up here, Again, we talked about this on the last episode, just stuff that I've been working on. I'm going to do a big burn too. I haven't sold any of these. This is Jeff Mills, one man spaceship with a 909 and an, on an observation deck. I think this is worth two Tezos 50. I uh, haven't gotten much love on that. So I may just turn it into a one of one uh, in the next day or next few hours or so. So... Uh, feel free to get that. That's in my little pixel art sketchbook. And maybe this isn't exactly technically pixel art, but if you actually zoom in on it, I don't know if you can zoom in on it. Uh, it is actually with a square brush. You got the 909 edition of 10. So I'm going to do a massive burn here soon, everyone. So kind of get it while you can. This didn't sell at all. I mean, I thought this was a beautiful sketch of a like half finished sketch of a 909 so be it i mean and this is another thing I'd look at these great artists that aren't even selling their work or at least cool artists that aren't even selling out who actually have a big twitter following or reasonably big or not insignificant so a message to artists when you don't sell as someone who's i've been doing the art game i guess seriously for I don't know, I guess since 2012, but when I moved to Berlin, it was, I moved to really just do art and yeah, I have my little side gigs, but uh, to pay the bills, but that's basically what I've done with my life. Uh, so, and what I say with that is, as I was saying, I had some big sales before and part of the artist's life is, it's kind of like a boom and bust. And I talk to friends who have been in like the Financial Times and many newspapers and that's the story of their career too. Like that's the norm is, and my friend who is, is in the financial Times, And again, like he's got like a whole scrapbook of press, you know, of his shows from like 2007 or something. He's a little older than me when he was booming. And then he like, then nobody cared about his work for a few years, generally speaking, except for a couple of little galleries. And now he's back in some museum show in New York. So that's why I say, don't get too down if you're not making sales because it's just kind of like that's just how it goes out here stick to doing your stuff and the good times will come and if you're booming just save for winter because it may not boom forever and that is just kind of how it works and that goes almost all the way to the top you know you look at julian schnabel who is you know, the, the toast of New York in the 80s. And he kind of went through, uh, he wasn't super loved or popular. He kind of went out of style. And now he's kind of having a moment again in the last, like, three or four years, shall we say. So he's had a few shows in Berlin here. So anyways, I'm going to leave it there because this has gone way over. But just a little tour on some recent acquisitions in Tezos. Here's a little summer thing I have in some... Folk solidarität, solid solidarity for, I don't know if it's for refugees or what it is uh, in Berlin, but this curator, L Lily Furstino, wanted to show some of my work. So it's just, the reason I have this up is because I'm going to update my website, actually, because I haven't updated it since July. There's always so much to do. Anyway, let me get my outro music here and answer my girlfriend's text and so anyway so there you go that is another edition of that is today's edition of the artist journal 
Take care, and I'm going to try and keep up with this. If you like it, give me a like, subscribe. Until next time, take care.